Welcome to the What is Middleware series. My name is John Brunswick. And we're going to discuss service-oriented architecture capabilities. In order to do this, we're going to continue to use our fictional towns, Middleware Fields and Codeaway Valley. Now, at Middleware Fields, they're a very eco-conscious community. And because of this, they want to enable all of their employees to use public transportation to get to their work to cut down on pollution. So an employee can take a bus to work, take a ferry to work, they can take the subway to work, they can even use a ride sharing service to get to work. Now, at first this was a great idea and everybody was very excited about having all these different transportation services. But some challenges arose when people changed their last name, needed to update their billing information with one of these services. Each one of these services stored its customer information a little bit differently. Over at the bus, they used a big mainframe computer to store all the information, and you have to telephone in to the bus company to make sure that that information is updated and accurate. For the ferry service, they actually store everything with paper files. So in order to get in touch with them, you actually need to mail them to have them update their paper files. Over time, this became really frustrating for the employees of Middleware Fields. They said, there has to be a better way. I can't have the knowledge of each one of these systems and how to communicate with them. It's just too complicated. So what Middleware Fields did, being the innovative group of people they were, they created a transit pass. Now that transit pass all of a sudden gave one single place where people could go update and change information without having to understand anything about the bus, the ferry, the rideshare, or the subway companies. In addition to that, when a new form of transportation was introduced, for instance, community bicycle transportation, or maybe they replaced the existing bus line. Nothing needed to change for the employees. They could still use their transit pass and get access and work with all that information. So, what does this mean with enterprise IT? Within our companies, we have a variety of different systems. These could be ERP systems, CRM systems, financial systems, web portals, mobile portals. What we're able to do using service-oriented architecture principles and capabilities is to take those systems and create a single way to communicate across them because one system might use COBOL to communicate, another might use .NET, and another might use Java. They each have their own ways of working with code. So the problem at big companies is you need skills in every single one of these if you want to, for instance, provide self-service online for people. You need to cobble together all these existing services. So, using things like a service bus, we're able to have a single place that everybody can communicate to that uses a single approach and uses a single skill set. This means that if somebody wants to change their ERP, they don't need to change all the ways in which the other systems talk to the ERP. If the web portal and the CRM system both speak to that ERP, because they do it through service-oriented architecture principles and something like a service bus, we can swap out that ERP and not have to change the existing integrations. We just need to change the one integration at the top specifically for that ERP. So this gives enterprise organizations a tremendous amount more flexibility. It allows them to have an easier time managing their systems and a lower cost of management. This allows them to respond to business needs more quickly. So as companies get more and more systems in order to reduce the complexity, service-oriented architecture principles and the technologies like a service bus that support them provide tremendous value. This has been What is Middleware? Service-Oriented Architecture Principles and Capabilities.